Welcome to Verifone's introduction to the C18 self-checkout. Screen navigation. The purpose of this video, is to introduce you to the C18 self-checkout screen navigation. Beginning with application base 5311, Verifone C18 point of sale comes installed with two different operating modes. The first, is the point of sale mode, which is cashier facing, and the other is the new self-checkout mode, which is customer facing. The self-checkout mode will allow customers to ring up items, and pay for them, without any interaction from a cashier. Let's go over some minimum specifications for self-checkout. Self-checkout is only available on C18 points of sale, running applications that are base 5311 and higher. All other points of sale are not compatible. The C18 may be switched from a point of sale, POS, to a self-checkout, SCO, and vice versa. Now, let's look at screen navigation. Starting with software applications that are on base 5325 or higher, the merchant may change to self-checkout in one of two ways. The first method, is touching the application icon, in the bottom right-hand corner of the login or doorstep screen. The next screen prompts for point of sale or self-checkout mode. It also shows which mode is currently running, by highlighting it in blue. If the point of sale application is selected, it will proceed to the POS login. Users may also cancel the application selection, by pressing the white X. The point of sale will now transition into a self-checkout. A message asks the user not to flip or rotate the screen, during this transition. The entire changeover, takes approximately 45 seconds. After the changeover, the user may then log in. The second method, is to flip the screen from cashier facing, to customer facing. The C18 must be logged out, for this method to work. If the screen is flipped, while the C18 is logged in, the following message will appear. The employee will need to flip the screen back to cashier facing, then log out of the C18. If the C18 is logged out, and the screen is flipped, this message will appear. The cashier may choose self-checkout to change the application. If a selection is not made within 60 seconds, the C18 will automatically switch to self-checkout mode. After the selection timeout, or a selection is made, the C18 will start the switchover. After approximately 45 seconds, the self-checkout login screen will appear. Note that the first digit of the register number, now starts with a 3, rather than a 1. This is to identify it as a self-checkout register, separate from the point of sale. The last two digits still reflect the register number. Touching the screen, will cause the login prompt to appear. Any POS security user that is flagged as can cashier, may log into the register. Cashiers who log into the SCO, will not be responsible for its activity. Reports totals are generated separately from the cashier. For more information about reporting, please view our C18 self-checkout configuration and reporting video. After logging in, the SCO welcome screen will appear. Notice the C18 static rail is hidden from customers. In the upper right corner of the screen, is a help button. When pressed, a need help screen will appear. When the call cashier button is pressed, the SCO will make the following sound. This audibly signals the cashier for help. A monitoring button, may also be added to a panel in the touch screen configuration, that will monitor the status of the self-checkout. This button, can be seen from any POS that has the panel containing the button, assigned to the register. The button will turn orange, when the customer presses the call cashier button. It will turn black, if the self-checkout is not logged in. Newer bases of the self-checkout, will also show the number of items rung up, and the subtotal. More information about the self-checkout button may be found in the commander user reference, found on the support portal under technical support, support articles, Petro and Convenience, Manuals and User Guides, Commander User References. Look for the Self-Checkout Monitoring section. This is how the login screen will look, if the application is on base 5340 or higher. 
Notice the store logo is larger, filling the 900 by 840 pixel image area. Static instructions are to the right, along with a configurable custom message. The accepting most credit cards icon, will display no matter what. If the cash recycler is installed on the SCO, the icon will change to include cash payments. The prepay for fuel here icon, will display only if fuel is allowed at the self-checkout. More information about fuel prepay, will be covered later. Details about the cash recycler, and its installation, can be found in the SCO user reference, on support.verifone.com. Under technical support, support articles, petro and convenience, general info, feature references. If the customer is ready to start checking out, they can press start checkout or start scanning their items. In base 5340 and above, users can tap anywhere. This is the main self-checkout screen. The screen is divided into two parts. The item screen, and the virtual receipt. Items populate in the virtual receipt when they are scanned or selected. The subtotal and checkout button are below. Items marked as a hot item, in category configuration, will show up on the main screen. Only 5 hot items show on the main screen. If the item does not scan, or is not on the main screen, customers may press look up, to search for the item. Categories are shown at the top of the lookup screen. Swipe left on the category bar to browse additional categories, and swipe up to view more items. Pressing a category changes the items displayed in the item section. Items on the lookup screen can be PLUs or menus. PLUs will be automatically added to the virtual receipt when pressed. Pressing a menu button will reveal the PLUs in that menu. Remember, items in a menu can have pictures assigned to them, but only in the menu configuration. Selecting a menu button from an expanded menu will add that item to the virtual receipt. Multi-select menus require the user to press the X in the upper left-hand corner to dismiss the menu. Menu chains will require the user to press X or press done at the bottom of the screen. Pressing X in the upper left-hand corner will exit the lookup view. An item may not be able to be sold at the self-checkout for a number of reasons. These include, but are not limited to, items assigned to a department that is not listed in the selected department's list. Under Global Configuration, items marked as Open PLU. Items assigned to a department that is marked as Fuel or Money Order. Items that may be sold as a fraction of a quantity. And items marked as Not Sold. When an item meets one of these qualifications, the following message will appear, and the customer has the option to cancel the product. If the customer has already rung up items and runs across this message, they have the option to cancel just this item, and continue with self-checkout, or press pay at counter. The pay at counter option will in effect, suspend the transaction and print a suspend receipt. The customer can then bring this receipt to the counter for the cashier to scan, and continue with checkout. It will also show up in the other points of sale under the recall function. Age restricted items will prompt to call the cashier. The cashier can then log in using cashier functions, ring up the item, and fill in the age, or slide the ID on the pin pad. More information about cashier functions, will be covered later. C18 does have a timeout feature, for inactivity. If the screen is activated, but no items are rung up, the screen timeout is 1 minute. If an item is rung up, but no method of payment is selected, the screen timeout is 5 minutes. Once these times have been reached, this message will appear on the SCO. The user has the option to either end the session, or continue with the sale. If the customer does not make a decision within 10 seconds, the session will automatically end, and return to the attractor screen. Once the customer is ready to check out, they may press the checkout button in the lower right hand corner. Next. The customer will be able to select the method of payment. Once a method of payment is selected, the user will be directed to use the pin pad to complete the transaction. The customer then follows the prompts on the pin pad to complete the transaction. If the payment was successful, an option to print the receipt will appear. Merchants now have the choice to offer fuel prepays at the self checkout. The fuel prepay button will appear after pressing start checkout if it is enabled. To enable fuel prepays at the self-checkout, 
First, log into Configuration Client. Then, hover over Initial Setup, and press System Properties. Please note, users must be assigned a role that has the U, Sapphire, Prop function enabled, in order to access this menu. In the System Properties, find the Allow SCO Fuel Prepay property. If it is set to Yes, fuel sales may be rung up at the SCO. If it is No, fuel sales will not be allowed. Back on the SCO, log out, and then back in, to update the configuration. Once logged back in, the Fuel Prepay icon should appear. Press the Fuel Prepay icon, to prepay a fueling point. After pressing the Fuel Prepay icon, the SCO will ask you which fueling point to prepay. Select the pump number, then press OK. Next, enter the value you wish to prepay, in either volume, or dollar amount. After entering the value, press the dollar sign button for dollar amount, or the gallon button for volume. Next, select the desired grade. The pump is now reserved. Notice the prepay icon is grayed out, preventing additional prepays. Pressing checkout, will prompt the user to select a network-based payment option. If the transaction is approved, the pump will now be prepaid. Cashier functions Now let's go over accessing cashier functions. Store employees, that have can cashier selected on their POS security profile, may access cashier functions before, after, or during a sale. To access cashier functions, press and hold the help icon in the upper right hand corner for 5 seconds. The store employee will be prompted to enter in their POS security ID. Press OK, to continue. After entering the POS security ID, the static rail for the self-checkout is now available. Let's look at some of the sales functions available. Pressing on items in the virtual receipt, will present more options. These options include, void line, add tax exempt, change quantity, discount, change price, modify the PLU, and cancel. On the static rail, there are options for error corrections, voiding the ticket, voiding the selected line, suspending the transaction, and checking the price of an item. Pressing suspend transaction, or void ticket, will cause the static rail to disappear. You can also cause the virtual keypad to appear. Using the keypad, you can manually enter PLU numbers, if the items fail to scan. If there are no items in the virtual receipt, buttons for recalling suspended transactions, reprinting old receipts, and entering cashier functions, will appear. To dismiss the static rail, users can press the X, next to the virtual keypad. Let's look at the CSR functions. The CSR functions on the self-checkout, are similar to the point of sale. Notice the option to show fuel, is missing. In addition to accessing CSR functions, employees may log out of the self-checkout, using the logout button. Close lane. The close lane feature, allows merchants to close the self-checkout, without logging out of the point of sale. It also allows the merchant to create a custom image and message on the screen. To configure the close lane feature, log in to config client, hover over store operations and click close lane. Lane close configuration allows you to write a custom message to display on the screen, change the message color, screen background, and select an image from the image upload library. To change the message or background color, enter in a valid 6 character hexadecimal code, or click on the corresponding color swatch, to select from 40 default colors. Clicking the more button will display more options. You must enter text in the message text entry box to save the configuration. However, making the message color and the background color the same, hides the message on the closed screen. This allows you to create a custom image. The preview button, displays how the closed screen will look. Remember to save the configuration. To close lane, first enter cashier functions on the self-checkout, by holding down the help button for 5 seconds, and entering the password. Enter the CSR functions by pressing the corresponding button in the bottom right hand corner. Then press the maintenance menu, and finally close lane. 
A confirmation message will appear and the user can click close lane. Starting an application base 5325 and higher, the merchant may close lane on the doormat or login screen by pressing close lane. The close lane screen will show the message in message color, background color, and the image selected. Remember, you can hide the message by making the message color the same as the background color. Close lane will remain on the screen, even if the day is closed. However, if the C18 is rebooted, the login screen will appear after booting. To open the lane, an employee must double tap on a hidden button in the upper left hand corner. Then, press open lane. The employee will then be prompted to enter user ID and password, and the attractor screen will appear. Thank you for viewing Verifone C18 self-checkout training video on navigation.